Hello and welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And this video is to talk about origin of life. So in this series of videos, we'll be talking about the evolution biology. And this is the first video of evolution biology for NET or CBSC class 12 or any AP biology topic wise lectures. So in this video, we want to talk about how exactly life evolved and how exactly life originated in the first place. Now the question is always there. Let me first divide this topic into three different sections so that we can understand it properly. Now the evolution term, when we say evolution, the evolution term is ex like it, it's exerted to explain how the life forms that are that we can see now existed from their ancestors which were present earlier. Now when we ask the question regarding the origin, it's how exactly uh, so what is the origin means how exactly the life is created in the first place there are many many kind of rumbles created you know many people believe in creationism and intelligent design and things like that but believe me first things first I should clear it out this is a science video and this is purely a uh, science textual video so we are going to talk about the scientific approach to discuss about the origin of life now if I want to answer in a single word we don't know that's a kind of uh, the first answer that we can say because nobody knows about how exactly life has originated but what we get uh, what we what we've got uh, for a long research based on how life originated we found a lot of new information and it's like a puzzle you know we get a few portions of the puzzle and the few other portions of, of the puzzle and we need to connect all those puzzles together just like a jigsaw to produce a complete picture which is not yet clear but we have many different portions of the puzzle cleared out so let us talk about that so the origin of life to explain the origin of life you need to know one thing that the evolution works in a multiple levels so if you start with a single point the evolution start with the cosmic level cosmic level evolution means the evolution while the earth is not formed so right after formation of the earth there are atmospheric changes to the earth that happen and that changes is is cooling uh, of the earth as well as rainfall so that the water content start to increase earlier the earth uh, was not that cool it's of high temperature and the environment is filled with all those inorganic gases like uh, it carries methane wa hydrogen water vapor many more things you know uh, that are that are present nitrogen as well few uh, sulfur sulfides and many other uh, gaseous materials that are present at the early atmosphere then once you understand that cosmic evolution then we start to talk about the origin of life and when we talk about the origin of life we are talking about the chemical uh, mode of evolution because here we will be talking about how exactly these inorganic components start to produce organic components because that is the link between inorganics and organics because now we know that an organic organism produce another organism right that means from one generation to the next so we are living producing another living being but here definitely what about the first living being who produced the first one definitely the first one is produced from all the compounds that are present in the atmosphere at the early environment of the earth so that's why we need to talk about a chem chemical evolution that dictates the conversion of inorganic inorganic molecules to organic molecule that's the chemical evolution and then once you understand the chemical evolution then it's time to talk about the geographical and actually organic organic evolution that is the evolution of all the organisms and finally we will see many different uh, organisms born at the end and like human being is one of those organisms so this in a nutshell is the sequence of all those different patterns of evolution that we need to understand so today we will talk about in this lecture we will talk about this this uh, cosmic level of evolution and we know that uh, in the cosmic level it states us that there are inorganic gas and components that are there in the environment and we will talk about the chemical evolution in a large scale because when we talk about the origin of life now the question is what is life the answer to it we don't know still that's the idea we don't know about the life because earlier we said the life means an, uh, something which which uh, respond to the environmental stimulus from outside a life is something which divides and produce a new life form but now we know that these features are also present in other things like you know crystals crystals grow divide but crystals are not living 
So how can we answer this question? We don't know. But we know the life carries two, three very, very important things. First of all, organic compounds. And when we talk about organic compound, they are filled with hydrocarbon. You know, a lot of hydrocarbon compounds like fatty acids, you know, lipids, uh, which uh, are prepared from fatty acids. Then there are amino acids which will make proteins and nucleic acids that makes our DNA and RNA. These things are unique to only living organisms which are not present in non-living organisms. Okay, so now let us discuss about how exactly that organic compounds are prepared from the inorganic compounds that are present. So first of all, let us talk about the hypothesis that was formed earlier that thinking of the early atmosphere of Earth that the earth carrying all those inorganic gases surrounding its atmosphere. It carries methane, it carries hydrogen sulfide, let's say it carries hydrogen and uh, water vapor, ammonia, all these gaseous compounds which are toxic to our health and for any other living creature. But those inorganic compounds somehow should produce organic compound. Otherwise, it's not possible to produce organic, right? Because earlier there was only inorganic, now we see living organisms which are organic. So the only way that organics are created is from inorganic compound. And earlier, a hypothesis being made uh, by Oparin and Halden, they suggested us that right after the condensation, that is rainfall, uh, you know, there is a formation of ocean and any water bodies in the earth. And in those water bodies, as there is the presence of water, water facilitates different chemical reaction. We know different chemical reaction requires water. So once they have water, this uh, gaseous components like, you know, this uh, ammonia, let me write, ammonia, methane, hydrogen, all these gas components, they tend to interact with themselves and somehow they need energy. Once they get energy from the earth's environment, they convert themselves into some very simple organic molecules. Now, those simple organic molecules will combine with each other to produce complex organic molecules. So, something like that, the hypothesis stated and started with the inorganic, inorganic compounds. Uh, let me write ammonia, methane, hydrogen, etc., etc. Now, those inorganic compounds produced organic compounds, right? And those simple, obviously simple organic compounds produce complex macromolecules and those complex macromolecules then slowly modified uh, and they will talk about that how exactly they are modified but remember one thing these all steps that inorganics can com convert into simple organic molecules and complex organic molecules so these steps they are all catalyzed in that water bodies you know you know oceans mostly uh, because they need the presence of water and also they need energy. Now the question is who will provide energy for the reaction in the early earth atmosphere? And the answer to it is lightning because we know lightning was already there. It, it was very rough environment. So lightning uh, can cause the conversion of this inorganic to simple organic. So is it possible? Now this theory is known as Oparin and Handel theory. And once we talk about all those inorganic gas and components that are present in the water, it is known as the Halden, Halden soup. Halden soup. So once they form this Halden soup, this is the hypothesis. The Halden soup somehow helped them to create a new life form, which is very primitive, but they form a newly life. Now the answer to it, what we can say is that that this need to be tested because this is the hypothesis. This need to be tested. And who tested this hypothesis? Yuri and Miller uh, with the famous Yuri Miller experiment or Miller Yuri experiment. So I'm not going to talk about in details of Yuri Miller experiment. So if you want to talk about and know about Yuri Miller experiment, you can watch it. Uh, watch the other video, my separate video on Yuri Miller experiment. So at this point, uh, Yuri and Miller, they conducted the experiment to prove whether the inorganic compounds are enough to produce a simple organic uh, molecules. So what they did, they designed a spe special chamber uh, with a reaction chamber where they provide all these inorganic gases and they also provide energy by providing two electrodes like a spark exactly replicating the environment of early atmosphere of lightning and that causes the, the interaction between these inorganic uh, molecules to produce simple organic molecules and the simple organic molecules are 
what are the examples simple organic molecules fatty acids uh, that they produce amino acids are produced okay so these organic compounds which are produced simple organics like fatty acids amino acids once these compounds are produced then these fatty acids will link to each other to produce lipids and those amino acids are linked together to produce proteins so at the end what we have lipids and proteins which are you know macromolecules which we now know that our cells contain so which is already produced at this point now at this point we have lipids proteins but those macromolecules which are produced they are produced in the aqueous environment they tends to link together they tends to stay together as an aggregate and those aggregate is known as coservates coservates because i hope i spell it correctly so all those uh, macromolecules tend to stick to one another but without any kind of outer membrane to them so they are floating so in the aqueous environment so in the aqueous environment you have all those macromolecules sticking to one another but they don't have any membrane surrounding them they don't have this is an open system they don't have any membrane to separate them from the environment so coservates now once coservates which are also known as the aggregates macromolecular aggregates now this coservates start to modify itself how because these lipids start to surround these coservates these lipids they start to surround these coservates so once the lipids start to surround the coservate then what we can say now this becomes a closed system why because now the membrane separates this macromolecules from the rest of the environment this is where we are calling it as a protocell protocell okay not the exact cell but protocell so then from there they start to be modified how these macromolecules which are prepared lipids and proteins similarly at this simple organic they also produce pyrimidine purine i mean of purine pyrimidine these are the important ingredient of nucleic acid okay so nucleic acids are the building blocks of dna and rna so this protocells start to have dna or rna so once the protocell have the genetic material then this protocell is converted to primitive cell now the cell that they prepare so cell should contain all the three macromolecules that is lipid that is protein and nucleic acid that is dna or rna now another question still remains even after explanation till this point is that what was there as a genetic material whether it is dna or it was rna now earlier for a long period of time scientists believed that that's supposed to be the dna because dna is uh, the primary genetic material but now what we know slowly that the dna can only act as a you know uh, the information providing or genetic material but dna cannot act as a enzyme which can be done by the rna because rna can act as an enzyme to catalyze reactions because at the very beginning at that point we need that uh, genetic material to be replicated that means to make more and more copies of it so that this cell will divide and provide its genetic material to the next uh, cell so that they continue to divide and produce more and more organism now at this point we need something we need uh, a genetic material which is versatile and rna as a genetic material is more versatile than dna because rna can act as enzyme it can catalyze its own reaction and also rna can make a copy of dna rna can make more rna copies from that dna and it can do all these things by itself so that's why now it's prescribed that rna is prime contender for this as a genetic material at the early state or origin of life so rna originated earlier now this concept is also known as rna world rna world hypothesis this is still a hypothesis because we don't know that for sure but we know that there are more evidences to support rna world hypothesis than 
calling DNA as a primary genetic material which has originated at the beginning. So this is how the life has originated. In a simple terms you can say the inorganics are the actual compounds which are producing the organic in the very first place. Then those organic molecules stick together forming aggregates known as quasar weights. And those quasar weights start to accord all those cell membranes surrounding them forming protocells. And those protocells once receive the genetic material which is supposed to be RNA will be converted to into the primitive cell. Now, all the living creature that we can see now including us uh, all of us uh, have originated from this primitive cell that single cell that was there at the very beginning of the origin of life and that is the idea of organic evolution how come all of us originated and all of our ancestors is this one primitive cell and we know this primitive cell slowly start to mature into prokaryotic cell and then those prokaryotic cells slowly start to mature and form eukaryotic cell. And now multiple modifications to the eukaryotic cell makes it more complex over the time of evolution. And then finally what we see is far complex human being who is capable to even think of what happened as a process of evolution. So that in a sense is the origin of life. Now remember for CBSC and NET syllabus uh, I may have talked a lot more information than you actually need but for any ET preparation I believe there will be questions from this portion so I think it's better to understand this overall process in details rather than in very short fragments. So if you want to know about the Yuri Miller experiment in details you can watch that in my channel you can type in or I'll put the link in the description. If you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos of the evolution biology series and in the next video we are also going to talk about the organic level of evolution the mechanism of evolution and the evidences of evolution and many more things so stay tuned and watch it